trying to to sound work as soul work is kind of the title I use for it. it as a, as a result of my own kind of spiritual journey and my own personal therapeutic journey of um, really discovering what my own reason for being on the planet is and like what my music is all about and I've been gifted with a you know uh, a voice and uh, um, for years I tried different things with it and it was always sort of a disappointment uh, as to what um, what it would be you know I had oratorio and I did a lot of church music and um, and percussion ensemble and uh, you know, I also when I was you know teenager, I did all the the performance and the the um, uh, music theater and also like uh, competitive music festival competition and stuff. And but there there was a you know a point like probably ten years ago, and I just kind of came to a, sort of a brick wall with with where my music was supposed to be going. And so I actually went to see a, a soundwork practitioner who I trusted and went through a bunch of, um, you know, sessions with him to really unlock my naked voice, what I call my naked voice. And that, that's a term that comes from a, uh, a woman in England by the name of Chloe Goodchild, who, is, who I've followed her music practice um, to really release your true voice from you know, from the the place of soul. So it came from a real, uh, a real sort of brokenness, and uh, I started with just a. I'd never sung ever before without a piece of music in front of me, like a piece of printed music with lyrics and you know notes to follow, and the thought of just singing extemporaneously uh, with nothing to follow just like was just terrifying. And so he encouraged me to just somehow connect with that piece. So I just, I came home and I, I, I just started to, I got a Tibetan singing bowl and I, I just started to sing with the vowel sounds, ah and o oh and e and, and after months of just being with myself in, in a kind of a, a, a quiet room, just learning how to unlock that and it came through a lot of pain and through a lot of like tears as well because that was the connection to the spirit for me that music had always been the connection to the divine so there was this like opening up of this place within me that was that that was just this beautiful connection of um of real deep meaning, deep connection. And I think deep, creating deep connections with, with others, with myself, with the, with the earth, with the sacred is, is what I'm all about. So this is basically how I started finding my true voice. So I just would stand and just start with one note. Every moment is a new, new experience of making sound together with, with myself and with other people as well, which is something I really enjoy doing, is leading other people to unlock their, their own natural naked voice, but also the sounds that come from ambient instruments and easy-to-use instruments that I've uh, learned to uh, use, and also, you know, purchased uh, instruments that are unknown a little bit to some people. Um, they can be a little bit um, uh, intimidating, but uh, easy t because it doesn't require any musicianship or musical training to use them. West African instrument, very ancient, and some people call it a thumb piano. Um, uh, it's um, and it it's it's an ostinato instrument where it you lay down a, a tune um, and um, it's 
it's a wonderful instrument. It, it, um, I have found that that one instrument I've really connected with because it supports the vocals that I can do. And instead of replacing, because the vocals are my, my first and foremost, what I call vocables, which are non-English words, they're mostly vowel sounds. Um, but it, it helps people to get out when they hear it. It helps people to get out of the of the monkey mind head and the the the, the left brain. Oh, I'm trying to make sense of this into just being able to being almost in a trance-like state or a meditative state. So uh, that's what the the vocals that I do are. So the kalimba is a good instrument that kind of supports that. I don't call myself a healer, but I certainly draw heavily on that archetype in the work that I do. I offer, a crea I, I create a, a safe space, a, a moment in time for people to just dive deep through a deep listening experience. And so I just ask them to be present. And they lay down on, you know, and I surround them with live sound. And live sound is different than listening to a CD. I mean, CDs are good. Any kind of music is great. But when it's live, you get a different thing happening to the body. So the body cells start to remember um, sounds, and so the vibration that's being created by these instruments is all sound waves. And sound waves go through your body three times faster than they go through air because the, your body's water. So sound goes through water faster than it goes through air. So the sound that I'm creating around you in this 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 soundscape is like going through your organs and your, the, you know, the, the sound of, of, of a certain note or a certain um, uh, interval can affect the, the human body in different ways. We're just, just starting to really key into this ancient, ancient thing of the, how sound can be amazingly healing. So I create a safe place for people to just experience something deep. One client said to me, this is the most present I've ever felt. The most present in the now, right in the now. A lot of people have tried to meditate and learn to meditate and find it's difficult. Uh, people report to me that when I'm creating sound around them, it's easier for them to drop in to that place of deep meditation or just letting go. When I'm, you know, I'll be drumming like maybe over top of their body or actually put an instrument right on their body. And they'll say, well, I experienced the sound tingling and then it would stop at a certain place in my body. And I, all I do is I ask them to notice that. There's no right or wrong to music. There's no right or wrong to anything.